Yes, hello and welcome to this presentation. My name is Stefanie Rolfsmeier and I work for Blower Door GmbH in Germany. I will present today the paper from the AEVC conference in Ghent, Belgium, this year in autumn. Today, I will talk about findings that we have made during air tightness tests of very airtight buildings and apartments. We will learn something about time and a lot about patience that is necessary to do this kind of test, but more about this later. The trend in some European countries, such as Belgium, France and Germany, is that building air tightness is getting better and better. A very good building air tightness means that the quality of the air barrier is very high. Or, in other words, that the building envelope contains only a few leaks. This leads to new challenges when performing an air tightness test in the field. What we as experts need is more knowledge about the test procedure in this kind of buildings in order to get reliable results. In this presentation, I will show you what we need to know in order to perform an air tightness test in a very airtight building. But first of all, what is a very airtight building? A very airtight building has a very small N50 value. This is the N50 value is the result of a multipoint test with a blower door system. It shows the air change rate per hour at 50 Pascal building pressure. This is true for some large buildings with an excellent air change rate of 0 0.03 air changes per hour due to special requirements such, such as oxygen re reduction or fire protection and also passive houses with N50 values around 0 0.6 or much lower or air tightness tests in apartments in multifamily houses. What do we see during an air tightness test in this very airtight buildings. We see that it is sometimes not possible to do a proper airtightness test and sometimes it's even impossible to do this test. Why? What happens? During the test the software seems to work not properly. For example, it's impossible to get a stable and constant building pressure. The uh, building pressure from the chest goes up and down, up and down, and cannot reach a very stable plateau, for example. Or in the end, in the test result, the leakage, gra the leakage graph shows a poor correlation coefficient or the leakage graph show poor flow exponent that, it not, that is not between the allowed range. This leads to the following question. Why is it difficult to measure very airtight buildings? And the other question, what does a measurement procedure should, like, uh, should look like in order to obtain a reliable and repeatable, repeatable in order to obtain reliable and repeatable measurement results. In the first step, I will show you one test example that we have made several years ago. We have tested a very large building with an internal volume of 46,000 cubic meters. We need only one test system in order to do this test in this building. And 
we get an air change rate, an N50 at 50 pascal, of 0 0.03 air changes per hour. I will show you now the entire test that we did. This is a pressurization test, the overpressure test that we did in this building. What you can see in this diagram is on the horizontal axis is the time between 10 and 11.30. On the vertical axis you see the building pressure. The green graph shows you the building pressure and the red graph the fan pressure. Out of the fan pressure, we calculate in the end the airflow for each pressure step, for each test point. In light green, you can see the test periods that we take for a multi point test with here from 10 test points. What is the big difference between this kind of test and normal tests that we do? This test took us two hours. This is 20 times more than for a normal building. A building that has air change rates, let's say, between one, two, three, or higher. So this is extremely, so it need extremely much more time than for a normal test. I will show you now, we will, we will zoom in this graph. You will see, still see in the green the building pressure difference and in red the fan pressure where we calculate the airflow later. For each of these two test points you can see that there is a, in green and in red a small build up time and after several times see that both graphs, the green and the red, are parallel to the horizontal, to, to the time axis for test point one and also for test point two. This, when we reach this stable and constant building pressure, we can start to collect data for our test points. So we need some time before we reach a stable plateau. If we have a closer look and take out only one test point, we can see the following. This is a setup from 0 Pascal to 50 Pascal building pressure difference. In green, you see the building pressure difference as before. In red, you see the airflow or fan pressure also as before. And we can see now two different, let's say, phase, phases of this test point. The first is the set up time. This is a time that we need or that the building need, needs to reach a stable and constant building pressure. In this, in this uh, example, we need 300 seconds or five minutes or one test point before it reaches a stable plateau. After that point, we can start to take test da data for this test period, period, for this one test point. So we now have one answer of one of our questions. Why is it difficult to measure very airtight buildings? It takes much longer than usual, sometimes several minutes, to get a stable and constant pressure difference during a test. This was our experience or is our experience out of the practice. And now we have the question, can we define the setup time? Can we calculate the setup time for the building pressure dim difference in practice before we're doing the test or during we're doing the test? Because on, in the field, I do not know.
does it take one minute or does it take four minutes before I can collect data that can I use for my test point? We ask a colleague from us, Joachim Seller from Germany. He makes a study uh, and he makes also some calculations in order to find out if there is a, a theoretical background that, that we can use in order to estimate the time to do this kind of test. This calculation uh, based on the idle gas equation, the equation for leakage curve of a building, and um, we assume a constant airflow through the device and through the building envelope independent of the building pressure. So if the building pressure is 10 Pascal or 50 Pascal, we take this not into account. And I would like to show you one example in order to, to get the idea of this uh, study. Um, we, make, we calculate a pressure setup time for this following example, we have a start pressure of 50 Pascal. The building pressure difference is already at 50 Pascal and we would like to control the fan down to the next pressure step. The target pressure is 40 Pascal. We use a flow exponent N for the leakage gra graph, graph that is an estimation of 0.67. And um, we have another point, we say we don't want to reach exactly 40 Pascal. It is enough if, if, if we are close enough at the next tag, target pressure and we take a tolerance of plus minus 0 0.5 Pascal as a tolerance. Here you can see these results on the horizontal XS x-axis, uh, you can see the setup time in seconds for different N50 values. On the vertical axis, you see the building pressure in Pascal. And now I will show you some setup times for different N50 values. The first one in blue is a setup time for an air change rate of a uh, in a building of three. And it takes three seconds from 50 to come down from 50 Pascal to 40 Pascal. This is very fast. And this is the experience that we made the last uh, years. If we have a building that is a bit more airtight, for example, with an air change rate of one, it needs nine seconds to reach a stable and constant building pressure, target pressure. If we take a passive house, passive houses should be, should have an air change rate below 0 0.6. We need 15 seconds in order to get a, a, a stable and constant building pressure. And if we take our example from the very, very airtight building, we have a setup time of 300 seconds or five minutes for an air change rate of 0 0.03 air changes per hour. So the calculation that Johan did is very close to the tests that we do outside in the field. One of the test results of the calculation of a status study from uh, Jochen is that the lower the air change rate at 50 Pascal is, the longer it takes to reach a stable and constant target pressure when testing a very airtight building. Or more precise, the time required to achieve a stable pressure difference, the setup time, is inversely proportional to the air change rate at 50 Pascal, the N50. So our second question was, is it possible to determine the time 
the setup time for one building pressure and we can sound we can now say yes we have the possibility to calculate it this is great and thanks to Jochen at this point what can we recommend for our practical world work outside in the field there's an equation that helps us to estimate the setup time for the building pressure. You can see it here. It is the time in seconds. We can calculate if we take nine seconds per hour and divide it by the N50 that is planned for the building that we would like to test. Also in this case, I take the example that I showed you at the at the beginning of this presentation, the plant N50 is 0 0.03. And the time that we need to set up the building pressure or the target pressure is 9 seconds per hour divided by 0 0.03. And we got, the re as a result, around 300 seconds. So we have now have an estimation how long does it take or one target pressure to get a stable and constant plateau. Summary. I can recommend take your time for the measurement. Relax and slow down comparing to normal air tightness tests. A recommended test procedure for very airtight buildings is estimate the setup time for a test point depending on the plant and 50 value. Communicate with, with, the, uh, with your customer and ask for the plant F50 value for the plant air change per hour in order to have the possibility to, to check to get a value um, for the setup time. After that, if you did this, you can check, can I use the normal standard software in order to test this building? Or is it building, has this building such a very good air tightness that it is better to, to use another software that show you more information about the single test point that you get so that you as a user, user, as a tester, can decide which samples you would like to take for one test point. And after the test, check the test results and check the leakage graph. Uh, if, all, if you meet all the requirements that our standard, the EN138829 and the ISO 9972 would like us to have for the, um, for the test. If you would like to learn more about it, here are some articles um, that this presentation based on. Uh, and you can see that there are also some new findings on measurements of very airtight buildings and departments uh, in the proceedings of the AVC conference from this year. And at the end, I would like to thank you some colleagues that helped with ideas, that helped with studies, that helped with uh, support. This are Joachim Zeller. Joachim Zeller, he has done the study and helped us to estimate the setup time. I would like to thank uh, Paul Siemens, who has uh, given us some examples of very airtight buildings. I would like also to thank, uh, say thank you to Colin Olson, Gary Nelson, that, uh, and Valérie Le Prince. They, they, the three helped me also to, to see that this is an important point and becomes much more important now and in the future, and that we can now start to speak about and to develop a good way to handle this very airtight buildings tests. In the end, 
I would like to say good things take time and thank you very much for your attention.